Hey again everyone, this is a Lenovo ThinkPad X61. Released in 2007, it retailed for somewhere between $1,500 for the base model and $2,500 for a fully loaded system. This was your typical mid-tier, mid-spec, mid-reviewed, all-around mid-ultra portable with little pizzazz. It has a Centrino V-Pro sticker on it, which was Intel's way of branding the Core 2 Duo at the time, and this one has a T7100 CPU running at 1.8GHz, and at some point I bumped the RAM up to 4GB from 2, because, well, why not? And being a proper little business nugget, it has a 12.1 inch 4x3 1024x768 TFT screen that's just over 10 inches wide. At about 3 pounds, this was considered portable for 2007 business standards. Uh, they sacrificed the optical drive though, which was pretty typical for ultra portables of the era, so I'll be using disc images for a lot of the older games. For a nearly 20 year old machine, this thing's held up alright. The plastic is getting a little brittle, and the matte finish is developing that weird sticky texture that old ThinkPads tend to get. If you find one of these at a thrift store, it'll probably look nasty, because the matte finish tends to accumulate grime like crazy. The screen is getting a bit temperamental in its old age. It's still bright enough to use, but it needs about 10 minutes of warm-up time before it stops looking like garbage. I really like that they've pretty much maintained the look of the classic ThinkPad, but really squashed it down to fit the form factor. We're stuck with Intel's X3100 integrated graphics and Intel HD audio from the era before universally compatible Realtek audio chipset drivers. Every vendor had their own, and none of them ever seemed bug-free. Without putting in a ton of work, gaming on Windows Vista Basic is a pretty awful experience, so I decided to try Windows XP with Service Pack 3 installed which Lenovo claimed was supported. I ran into issues using both the official system restore disks and using the downloaded driver from the Lenovo site. But I did some searching and poking at the device IDs, and this thing claims it matches the device ID supported by the driver. I finally tried just forcing it to install, and sure enough it worked. So here's how you can get sound working in XP on the ThinkPad X61. I'll quickly go through the steps here in case you're not familiar with the innards of Windows XP. Download the SoundMax driver from the ThinkPad fan site. Get version 5.10.1.5710. Run the installer and watch it fail spectacularly. Then open control panel, and then click the system icon. Navigate to the hardware tab and click the device manager button. In the device manager, scroll to the bottom of the list and find the mystery PCI device with the missing driver with the yellow exclamation point icon. It will look similar to this. Right click on the device, select properties, click the driver tab, and then click the update driver button. Then select install from a specific location, also known as the grandiosely titled advanced option. On the next screen hit the browse button, and in the browse window navigate to the location that the driver installer extracted the Windows XP drivers. When Windows finds another missing device, repeat the steps. When you get to the missing modem device driver, you can skip installing that. For some reason the installer is broken, but forcing the driver installation works fine. So how's it actually perform? Well, my expectations were exceedingly low, but this turned out to be a surprisingly capable little laptop if you keep things in the realm of 2D and low-texture potato-friendly games like Half-Life. StarCraft seemed to run perfectly fine with no issues other than the occasional skip or crackle in the audio, and the track point was also not too bad for controlling it. I thought doing any real gaming with that little red nub would be torture, but it's surprisingly usable, especially if you spend any time tweaking the mouse settings. For turn-based strategy or early FPS games with enormous hitboxes, it's serviceable at worst. Some DOS games even have a joystick mouse mode that recenters the mouse after moving it, letting you use the track point as a tiny joystick. Well, Diablo 2 was having video-related crashes, but when I patched it to version 1.11, it, it ran well, so that was just old software being old software. As you can see, I got a bit distracted testing this one out. Warcraft 3 runs great with all of the graphics settings turned up to maximum. A group of Murloc Raiders in the nearby river. There are a few skips in the audio and little gameplay stutters here and there, but nothing worth complaining about, especially for laptop gaming. What's this all about, human? Human? <laughs> I left my humanity behind long ago. I was gonna run 3D Marco 5, but why torture myself? So the 
unofficial 3D mark score here is technically yes, I guess. The few games I tested were no real surprise, so I wanted to try something a little more demanding. The last good Doom game. What the hell are you waiting for, Marine? And in the wandering, I forgot to pull up the console and get the frame rate, but uh, 12 to 16 maybe, mostly? That's with all of the graphics settings turned down to their lowest and running at 640 by 480. Now this is the authentic retro gaming experience for me as a youth. Overheating computers, split book frame rates, ah, nostalgia. The higher end Windows gaming was a pleasant surprise, but what I really wanted sound in Windows 4 was to play Civilization 2, which was originally for Windows 3.1, and Windows XP will handle that just fine. But this system will boot DOS 2. And after a lot of fiddling with various versions of memory managers, I was able to get Sound Blaster emulation working in DOS using VSB HDA, the virtual Sound Blaster driver for Intel HD audio chipsets and a handful of others. Because I could only get this working using a mix and match collection of files from various versions of GEM, SVEMU, and VSB HDA, I'll zip those up together and share my autoexec.bat and config.sys files in a link below. But here's what my config.sys looks like. And here's my autoexec.bat file. Being able to emulate a sound blaster using modernish hardware can take a lot of old systems from being e-waste to being e-waste that can play some really great games. And recently VSB HDA was forked into VSB HDA SF by Kakodemon345, and this version supports MIDI emulation with sound fonts. Kakodemon's sound font fork of VSB HDA loads the same way as the original but you'll need to set two additional variables. Set the sound font environment variable to point to a sound font file, and change your blaster environment variable to set the MPU-401 address, usually P330. If you forget to set the MPU-401 address, you'll get no MIDI output. For DOS gaming, you want a general MIDI compatible sound font with the standard 128 instrument set plus percussion sounds that games expect like kicks, snares, hi-hats, all the natural drum sounds that make your games not sound like robots having arguments. For smaller sound fonts, I've tried 4G MGSMT, the classic 4 megabyte creative sound font that came with Sound Blaster cards and Corium Revision A, which samples the Roland Sound Canvas SCC01. Both worked fine, though there was a little clicking with Corium that seemed to happen at the end of some of the virtual instruments, but personally, I've stuck with the Rackno or Headsound's MT32 Revised, though both are probably overkill because the Headsound font is nearly a gigabyte in size. Different sound fonts give different results with different games, so I'd suggest trying a few if you're running into hanging notes, static and clicking, or instruments that sound out of place. Enormous sound fonts like Headsound can take a minute or two to load, so if it seems like your system is frozen, just be patient and it should eventually get there. I recommend going through the catalog of LucasArts DOS games and trying them out with MIDI if you haven't tried that before. I tried to post a clip here, but it was copyright claimed, so I guess those MIDI jams are spot on. Here's something that's way more enjoyable than I thought it would be. I've become addicted to listening to arrangements of synth-heavy 80s pop tunes. Megamid is a DOS MIDI player that's frequently recommended on retro computing sites like Vogons. It's a real MIDI player that works with MPU-401 compatible interfaces and can change instruments and controllers in real time. What makes it fun for me is the interface. It shows you exactly what's happening with notes, effects, and instruments with little visualizations that look like Guitar Hero. If you have an old XP-era laptop sitting at the bottom of a drawer, fire it up and see what sound chipset it has, because you may be able to turn it into a very capable DOS gaming portable or MIDI jukebox. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.